and welcome to Access DNR, the monthly video newsletter from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. In this episode, we check in on pelican populations, celebrate the prowess of state park lifeguards, measure water quality in the Chesapeake Bay, and more. I'm communications intern Emily Durrell, your host for this edition of Access DNR. We begin this episode in Dorchester County, where wildlife biologists and volunteers are studying Maryland's population of brown pelicans. To conduct the work, we take to the water and travel to remote Chesapeake Bay Islands several miles offshore. Once there, we carefully round up flightless juvenile pelicans and then outfit them with uniquely numbered bands. Moments later, agency partners and volunteers conduct a series of health checks and then the pelicans are returned to their nests unharmed. Over the course of several weeks, Staff banded 1,100 pelicans, nearly 90% of annual reproduction. The research conducted provides invaluable insight into the migratory movements and biology of the birds and helps to inform conservation decisions. Our next story takes us to another Chesapeake Bay Island, but this time in Baltimore County for the 29th annual State Park Lifeguard Competition. During a special event hosted at Hartmiller Island State Park, our lifeguards participate in a variety of games and activities designed to challenge not only their individual life-saving skills, but also their capacity for teamwork. Throughout the day, the island's sandy beach and expansive trail system provided a perfect setting to showcase impressive levels of speed, agility, and stamina. Individual crew members from various teams secured wins for their home parks, but the overall championship went to the Assateague State Park Beach Patrol. Congratulations to all of the participants. You're all winners in our book. Next up, we join staff on one leg of a midsummer main stem cruise of the Chesapeake Bay to get a first-hand look at water quality science. Throughout the year, a crew aboard the research vessel Karen works to evaluate dissolved oxygen, nutrients, suspended solids, temperature, turbidity, and more. To complete the process, water samples collected from various sites and depths are brought into the vessel's mobile lab and passed through a series of vacuum-enabled filtration devices. Later, smaller samples and filters with collected concentrates are packaged, cataloged, and brought back to land for more detailed analysis. This particular crew sampled multiple sites from Anne Arundel to Harford County, but the crew conducts sampling throughout the bay and its tributaries. And for our last story of this month, we want to express a deep gratitude for the many men and women, staff and volunteers alike, who have given their time to help clean and clear debris cluttered throughout our state lands and waterways. In late July, heavy rains in the Susquehanna River watershed required that multiple spillway gates at the Conowingo Dam be opened, providing a path into the Chesapeake Bay not only for excess water, but also for a very large volume of accompanying debris. Since then, we've seen countless cleanup efforts, both on land and by sea. Beaches have been cleared, navigation hazards have been addressed, and we continue to work diligently when and where needed. For those of you still experiencing the impact of the record water flow, please reach out to us or our partners and we will do what we can to help. Well, that's a wrap for this month. For the latest news and programs, please follow us on social media, subscribe to our magazine and newsletters, and download our free mobile app. For those of you on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to share our videos with family and friends. I'm Emily Durrell. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next month on Access DNR.